Megan Plummer is with us today. She's a soul integration guide. She uses a couple fundamental tools to help guide people on their personalized path. So today we're going to talk a little bit about astrology and dreams and artistry, because so much about understanding yourself is about being able to tap into your inner self. And Megan, she uses astrology to help you better understand your life's map, which is said to be written in the stars. This tool can be a powerful instrument of validation. She can help you tap into your subconscious mind by getting you to better understand your dreams, learning and trusting and reading them. She encourages creative expression by embracing the artist in you to open and expand your mind, being able to communicate in ways that words just don't allow. So I hope you enjoy this video. And as always, hit that like button and the subscribe button. And I, I, I hope you enjoy it. Take care. The empowering part to me is once you consciously like see and kind of like look at these wheels, it's then you can take it and um, work with it and become a co-creator, a co-writer of your story rather than just being kind of tossed around by the energies mm. themselves. Yeah, it's like right here. Like you are meant to <laughs> fucking succeed at doing X, Y, Z. Like it is right here if you allow yourself to do it. So I think sometimes it can also give people the opportunity to give themselves permission to actually do what their soul is asking them to do. Um, imagine, you know, having um, doctors, physicians, teachers, construction workers who are like enlightened and excited and, you know, really deeply connected to themselves and to source. They become clear channels for everything they create. There is like no place that this would go to waste because when we bring that level of uh, light and joy everywhere, it affects even like our everyday interactions. And those are just as valuable as a treatment room. I'm an artist and a writer, but I also do holistic wellness coaching and uh, what I would call like soul integration guidance. Okay. So I work with people towards their physical, mental, emotional health and well-being goals. Uh, you know, I started as a massage therapist and finished my bachelor's in alternative medicine. And I had a real desire to go from like that one-on-one, -on -one, you know, just an hour of time to helping, you know, offer people more tools and education that they can utilize and integrate into like a regular basis to create an overall, you know, healthier lifestyle and like quality of life ultimately. So what got you interested in going that route? What really encouraged me into this path in particular was having to drop out of college when I first went because, you know, crippling anxiety and depression, I wasn't able to function mm. and I was, you know, on medication and stuff and it wasn't actually helping. And I remember consciously having that thought like chain smoking cigarettes and being like, this isn't <laughs> fixing why I'm unhappy. You know, it's it's it wasn't solving the core of the problem. And, you know, I understand that medication is, you know, essential for certain situations. However, you know, in my experience, I, I felt that there was just like a, a deeper unhappiness or lack of fulfillment that was going on. And, and that was the core for why I was experiencing a lot of that anxiety and depression. So I started on this path to how I could. um fix the core of that issue amongst that experience in college when, you know, because I was away and I, when I was struggling, it was also the first time I experienced a yoga class. And it was the first time I experienced Reiki because I, um, I had moved to Philadelphia out of, out of Hartford County, Maryland. So it was just, um, it was, there was just more opportunities for that. So that's when I started, you know, like I got my first dose of it, you know, when, when I needed it most, it was giving me a glimpse of like different tools that could be used. And uh, it's actually interesting to look back on now. Uh, my friends and I were looking up, I think it's called astro cartography. And it's like, you can search up like your birth date, uh, similar to like your birth chart. And it'll actually show where like certain points are like on the world that like correlate with certain um, lessons and for example uh, 
my I forget which line it was, but it specifically had to do with like courage and confidence and spirituality that were in it like crossed like right through Philadelphia ish area. And okay. so and I didn't learn this until like a year ish ago. And so I think it's really interesting how moving closer to that literal point on the planet also first, you know, had me come up against like seeing where my self-confidence and, and courage really had room to expand and uh, the spiritual path to help me get there. And it's, you know, like I said, I, I saw that retrospectively y- almost 10 years later <laughs> is, is like, is where I actually saw that. And it's, it's cool and validating. I think when you um, right. start exploring these different perspectives. Uh, so then, you know, there wasn't like a, a bias in the moment of like expecting to see something, you know, okay. now it's like you see a, a correlation with it separately. So it's kind of like you looking back, you see why you experienced it. Yeah. Like yeah. why I went there, why I was drawn right. to a certain place, even though at the time I just, you know, I was a teenager and I just wanted to get out of like Harford <laughs> County <laughs> and, and like move to the city with the art and the culture. Um, well, like, we, for- we talked before and you had mentioned um, it seems like you, Put a fair amount of focus on astrology. You had mentioned, I wrote it down, let's see, it says, well, astrology can be used as a map uh, and your map is written in the stars. You know, it, it's interesting. I was talking to someone the other day and we had discussed uh, doing some work together and uh, our conversation went really, really well. And he's like, this is fantastic. If we get, you know, more serious about doing work together, I'm going to consult a person that I refer to, you know, my, my astrologist. And We'll, we'll have our signs read and really make a final, you know, a, a pretty good determination as to whether we're going to work well together. And I mean, that was, that surprised me a little bit because, you know, he obviously takes this very seriously. Um, and I, I will say with the little experience that I have with, um, astrological readings, I guess, is what you, how you would refer to them. Um, They've been pretty much on the money and just like very surprising. And yeah, I mean, the last one I got, it, it, it basically described my personality and why I do the things I do to a T. And yeah, I mean, it was, I was totally, totally surprised. I mean, it wasn't the stuff that you see, like, you know, horoscopes. I, mean, I don't put a whole lot of weight on that. Although, you know, some people are like, well, there's a, some truth there. Um, this was a person who really knew what they were doing and it, it really blew me away. And this guy that I had the conversation with, you know, he obviously puts a lot of emphasis on it and he's, um, you know, we're, we're talking about business stuff and he's like, well, you know, we'll need to consult my astrologist to see if this is really going to work. And I'm like, wow. You um, he, he's, he's really all in, you know, e- even when I was talking to my father, I guess, years ago about, you know, the astrology and, um, I mean, he's a doctor and he always used to say that when there's a full moon, I mean, something as basic as that, the, the energies or something about the energies of a full moon. Um, and you have more babies that are delivered. The emergency room is a lot crazier hospitals are just a little bit more out of control on the full moon. So in that very basic sense, I mean, that it, it, yes, it, it affects an everyday life, but then when you get into the intricacies of one planet and it's phased with another planet, I mean, that's uh, for me, that's hard to chew, but I've been surprised many times. Um, anyway, tell me a little bit more about, um, you know, astrology being used as a map and, and, and that your map is, is written in the stars. Well, I actually would love to touch on a little bit of what you said, because okay. it is its own language in a way. So I feel like it sounds strange to listen to and, you know, accept as far as like uh, a belief, if you will, right. originally, and, you know, a little bit of what I said earlier, I feel like you know, speaks to that as well, because I was also, you know, and still am a healthy skeptic for even as much as I've personally encountered. And I think once I started 
noticing like, you know, how I was feeling or the way things were not working or with how they were working. And then I would, you know, later read a, a transit that was happening or whatever energies that were present. And I would see it correlate, you know, after the fact, I'd be like, oh yeah, that was absolutely what was happening. And I think right. it was seeing some of that. And even with the astro cartography, like eventually seeing that I had, I totally have some, you know, lesson of sorts that, that goes along that line. And I mean, if you told me ahead of time, I probably wouldn't have believed you, but it's only because like I had that experience. And then like, I look back and I'm like, you know, I had no way to make that happen in that way, but those are absolutely the themes that came up. So I think it's um, allowing it to, your experiences to kind of speak for themselves, but also, you know, honoring the fact that your own language with spirit can be different. You know, what modalities and uh, perspectives speak to you, I think is, is extremely valid and important. You know, they have, you know, people go by birth charts, people go from, uh, different personality types or anagrams or there's uh, so many different ones. Right. There was human design. My friend was talking about and she's really into it. And I'm apparently a manifesting generator. And I was like learning what that means. And honestly, it can be exhausting <laughs> to like, to take in all these different um, perspectives, but that offers a beautiful opportunity for different ways to reach people in a way that like makes sense and resonates like with, their beliefs and like their sense of of truth yeah i think uh the, there's so many different modalities out there and it's more a matter of uh what's going to resonate with you and astrology is going to totally resonate with some people and for me at the moment well i mean i it, it's it's i guess i don't know where i stand with astrology <laughs> because it isn't something that i like openly buy into and yet it's it's been you know, nail on the head, accurate in the past. So how do I dispute that? I can't really dispute that. So, you know, maybe, maybe astrology is not my thing, but maybe I could say that it, it can be accurate and it can be an amazing tool uh, for people that want to practice it. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just validation of your experiences, I feel like it can help normalize the feelings or themes or things that are, are working or not working. Um, it, it helped me feel like certain uh, if I was having like a really emotional time or really dealing with like, uh, you know, anger or feeling stuck or whatever. And then learning that there was a corresponding uh, transit or something happening and that other people were feeling the same way. It completely normalized that experience for me and it like started to make it, you know, it OK <laughs> to feel whatever it is. It's always OK. But um to feel like there's a reason for it, you know, versus like there being something like wrong with you or that it's supposed to be like another way than it right. is. And that's where I feel like I also love using astrology as like personal maps. And I was really inspired by having the opportunity to learn more through a friend of mine is it's like your birth chart is your personal soul expression in this lifetime. Like this is your avatar and like, these are all like your character qualities, your, your gifts and your challenges and everything that you get to come in here with. And whether you know it or not, you're going to end up following your chart. And that's what my friend told me. <laughs> and it's been interesting to see it as well. And the empowering part to me is once you consciously like see and kind of like look at these wheels, it's then you can take it and um, work with it and become a co-creator, a co-writer of your story rather than just being kind of tossed around by the energies mm. themselves. Um, and again, a, a fantastic validation tool because I can, you know, I could blame my social anxiety and like not wanting to speak in front of people when I was younger, or I could be like, oh, like I have got Chiron in the 11th house of community, which is like, I have fear or wounding around that, that feeling of friendship and community. Like it's literally in my chart. Gotcha. And it creates a whole different, for me, it created right. a whole different perspective and compassion and being like, oh, like, this makes sense for me to, like, be experiencing. And then you can, like, work with it versus um, mm. fighting it or resisting it. Gotcha. That makes a whole lot of sense. So I guess as a coach, you kind of look for those qualities that someone with that particular map would be good at or would flow with. And 
um, that can make your life experience move a little more easier. Is that kind of the case? Yeah. (laughs) Do I have that right? Yeah. And that's why, you know, I, in my program with my coaching, I, I specifically include sessions like private sessions with an astrologer. Like I know some, but I also, you know, send you to the my specialist. friend and yeah, yeah, someone who actually has spent like a decade, like deeply studying and experiencing astrology who can give you like a more in-depth uh, view. And, you know, you can kind of take and digest that. And then we work with what you've learned and I actually set it up. So you have a few sessions with her throughout all our time working together because different layers come up each time. And, you know, besides like Mm. validating what challenges might be coming up, it can also, you know, validate if you feel really called or really passionate about something and we can be like, yeah, it's like right here. Like you are meant to fucking succeed at doing X, Y, Z. Like it is right here if you allow yourself to do it. So I think sometimes it can also give people the opportunity to give themselves permission to actually do what their soul is asking them to do gotcha. because it's like, um, you know, society expects us to be a certain way or, you know, that we have a perception that they expect us to be a certain way or uh, like a right or a wrong way to be in the world. Right. But, you know, to me, honoring someone's own intuition, their own soul path and figuring out how that fits into our world experience here. Right. Yeah, because society's map is probably not congruent with, you know, with certain peoples. And if you know what your astrological map is, it's more, you can more easily walk that line. It's no different than somebody having different learning styles or, you know, different ways of working, like neurodivergence, people who literally like learn and and do things differently. It's really... um, nobody like it's it's insane that we would all think that one path would work for absolutely everybody right that makes a lot of sense yeah and not only that but that every that you you would feel fulfillment and happiness doing something that somebody else does because you know what your view of happiness and fulfillment is might be different you know from somebody else's and that's part of the other like main goals in my coaching program in my coaching program when I work with people is to really understand like what ignites you like what are you really passionate about like what are your values and like you know how do you want to show up in the world and and really catering to that because that's what fills you up that's what makes you happy and makes you want to be in the world in like a certain way right. and to bring a certain energy in whereas like if you're following what Susie does over here and you're like I don't know why I'm not happy just doing the thing that I followed xyz why am I not happy and um it's because you're not listening to you there's a benefit to working with a team and Mm -hmm. when you know all these other modalities and these ways of of supporting people it, it offers you the opportunity to really cater to the individual because also how I see or express something might be different from, you know, any other practitioner, but it's definitely different from somebody And the language as simple as something is like the language that somebody else uses or their own personal experience might be able to relate to you in a very different way. You know, I, I don't believe that I have every single answer for everyone and it's unreasonable for me to try to collect it all or to try to be it all, you know, mm-hmm. and so finding like an awesome, like, you know, my awesome team of people where we can all use our gifts and talents cohesively to hold, you know, our, our clients and our friends, our community, you know, together mm-hmm. is to me, that's so profound, you know, and it offers so much more, more space and security, uh, I feel. And it just like honors the levels of variety and I love supporting my friends doing awesome things, you know, so. Absolutely. Yeah. So you had mentioned uh, some other tools as well, like um, uh, DreamWorks and uh, creative expression. Yeah. DreamWork is actually probably one of my favorite modalities and I love it even more so because it's another thing I realized I was using since I was a child in a way. And 
it's something we're all innately capable of using, but we're often taught, you know, oh, it's just the dream. That's like literally what our parents would say if something like was coming up for us sometimes or if it was a nightmare, for example. And, you know, we learn to ignore them. But in other cultures, dreams were deeply revered as, you know, communications from spirit. Okay. So they were very often shared and, and listened to in that way. So not only would they sometimes be messages for the whole tribe and like what was going on, how uh, they also are messages, you know, on a personal level and a personal practice from your own subconscious. Uh, Mm. And I have learned and practiced primarily through Carl Jung and um, Robert Moss are two people who I've read books um, by specifically and then a little bit from Toka Pa Turner. So just so, you know, back a reference from where I'm coming from. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> and, you know, so their perspective is, you know, this subconscious self kind of gets to go into the driver's seat and and express what's, what's, what's going on. So, you know, there can be three different types uh, of dreams, three or four, depending who you're following. Uh, but the first one is just day-to-day filtering dreams where it's just kind of like nonsensical and a lot of times you can pull out bits of like all right well I definitely just watched a movie that kind of included that element so you can you can see where those things influence it uh the second one is more like messages like from your guides or from like your your internal big s self subconscious and you know those might be I'll just share an example for myself because it's easier. Uh, The last few nights I've had a lot of trouble sleeping and, you know, I wake up and I'm feeling really stressed. And last night somebody had like thrown like a Molotov like cocktail and was like trying to like light uh, light things on fire. And I'm stressed out, like trying to put out this fire and then like it burns my arm and it's like, it's just, it's really stressful. And, you know, so I wake up kind of stressed and I've had a couple the past night, the few nights where like I've felt that and, you know, taking the fire example, that would be, you know, where do you feel I would ask myself or if we're in a dream circle, somebody might ask me, you know, where do you feel like you're putting out fires in life? Where, where do you feel like you're responsible for putting out other people's, you know, fires or like, you know, managing their emotions? I know a lot of times people say that um, you could kind of connect to your inner self by quieting the mind, uh, like, like meditating. And then there are you know, a lot of people have challenges meditating and may, maybe this is like a version of that. When you're dreaming, you're kind of quieting your mind, but messages are now kind of flowing to you. And if you can remember those messages, I, I guess the theory is that there's uh, true meaning behind that. There's stuff that we're supposed to embrace. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I, I love that you bring that up because that's one of the benefits of when we're sleeping, our conscious mind gets out of the way. (laughs) So, you know, when you're meditating and you have uh, your own thoughts and like, you're worried about time or like your stomach's kind of growling and you get distracted. Um, When you're sleeping, it's like a clean slate. Conscious self is asleep. So now the other side gets to actually talk. Uh, So those can be the subconscious self and messages, which are like the second level of dreams. The third slash fourth level, depending, like I said, how it's broken down, are precognitive slash divine messages. And those are ones where you can have precognitive dreams where like you can have elements of something that's going to happen in the future come through. uh, Or you might have an angel or guide or some kind of uh, divine message or encounter um, as well. You also talked about um, creative expression. So, you know, creativity is, it's an outlet for expression, you know, so similar to like allowing the subconscious mind or like other emotions to be completely free to express themselves. It's delightful because you can see like what wants to be said and like it's kind of similar into like moving into that meditative state especially if you can allow yourself just to go into like bigger motions and color and shapes and like those really like um, broad symbolic structures, if you will. So, and it, and that kind of crosses over from dream work a little bit because, 
you know, there is an energy or emotion to different things. So one of the reasons why I love creative expression as like a therapeutic uh, or even just self-care tool is it gives you a space that's safe to express whatever the heck you want that you might not be able to <laughs> to say out loud or to do okay. out loud. Well, because right. there's, you know, there's a certain amount that's acceptable in times and places. But when you allow yourself a space for creativity, you know, you can you can express anything that needs to be expressed in a, in a safe way. Hmm. And we're also naturally creative beings. You know, we are. Um, <laughs> it depends on like your your uh, your <laughs> your view of uh, of life. But it's like we are. Um, divine expressions of God like we are you know getting the opportunity to create our own realities like we like creativity is like our birthright and it's playful it's fun and it's a part of us that we often lose or put aside when you know we have day-to-day stuff and we become adults and (laughs) we have we have things we have to do and I think it's an important part to that sense of fulfillment and joy and it doesn't have to be painting it could be dancing it can be um stained glass i mean i'm picking more like artsy things but bottom line as long as it's something you enjoy you know whether it's singing or well i would think that it it a lot of the arts access a different part of the brain and it gives that part of the brain uh, the opportunity to speak or to be more open or like, you know, different interpretations of things to arise and express. Um, And I think as an overall rule, the um, more open we are, the more in tune with ourselves that we can, we can then become. What's what's your personal way of, creatively expressing your passion you know how do you uh integrate like your personal uh unique expression into whatever you do in the world and I think offering that space is also really powerful and incredible and uh, it's also why I include all of these things when I do work with people because you know it's creativity is like the life force (laughs) it's like that um it's like that shiny, you know, prana energy, like whatever, however you want to see it. It's, it's what gives life life. It's what animates us. It's what lights us up. Right. Right. Well, I, I just think it's so fantastic that, you know, you kind of start with the, uh, the map, you know, the astrology and figure out, you know, what, what you as a soul or a person is most likely um, where you're going to flow the best. So you start with this overall map using a specialist, you outsource. I think that's awesome. Right. And, um, and then from there you hone in on, on new strengths and you use creativity and um, your subconscious mind through dream works and you're a good coach for doing that. You know, I, I think, I think that's kind of the bottom line. It's a great, um, those are great tools to be using to help put your clients on, on a path for, um, you know, increased happiness and awareness. Yeah. I mean, it, it offers the opportunity for, for people to weave things together in a way that feels good for them. Like my goal is to always end up like informing and empowering the person that I'm working with because nice. I can't, you know, I can't choose or make anything different for them. But like, to me, the best thing I can do is give them like all the tools <laughs> and like the support system, the cheerleader and, you know, help them learn how to cultivate the life that makes, that brings them joy and happiness, whatever that vision is for them. And then, you know, help them integrate the changes so they know how to maintain it. You know, so I, I want to know how we can bring like that, that magic and that life into life, (laughs) you know, like it's important to be able to integrate it back into the real world, like into the structure that a lot of us want to get away from. We need people who are happy and aligned to be working within the system, to be aware of like what makes them passionate about and like what, uh, what they want to create, how they want to, how they want to be in the world. Mm -hmm. I think 
we talk so much about, you know, the value of like healers and working in this, you know, kind of one-on-one healing way. But to me, with this energy frequency that I do the attunements with, and then, you know, all of this work and the different levels of communication and finding what lights you up and living in integrity with what lights you up, it's like we need that to me in every single practice, in every single space. Mm. Um, imagine, you know, having um, doctors, physicians, teachers, construction workers who are like enlightened and excited and you know really deeply connected to themselves and to source they become clear channels for everything they create and that can absolutely include medicine uh the way we're living and like we can like if people you know have innovative ideas because they have the base knowledge for you know spirit to to like give them that sort of inspiration that muse that creative muse to help them find a solution you know, we are really good at finding problems, but I want to help people find solutions because <laughs> that's what's more useful in the end. And um, we can use this everywhere, even down to, to farming practices. There is like no place that this would go to waste because when we bring that level of uh, light and joy everywhere, it affects even like our everyday interactions. And those are just as valuable as a treatment room. Very well said. Love it. That was awesome. (laughs) That's a good message right there. (laughs) I think the thing I want to emphasize with dream work, um, especially in regards to the personal messages, like the, the second level, if you will, of like your subconscious connecting with you as um, honoring how you feel and, you know, the benefit of, noting things down helps you start to learn the language that your soul speaks to you. They're going to use uh, people, things, places that have meaning to you. So it's really Mm. learning and trusting that language. Um, So even, you know, if you're just starting a dream work practice, noting down anything you can remember is, is valuable, even if it's only a color or a feeling uh, and the more you listen and the more you note down, uh, the more it's going to talk to you. Because, you know, if our brain files that as like, oh, unimportant, it just is like it's going to move on with the day. But if it if you make a conscious effort to to be aware and to listen, it'll become a stronger pathway for that guidance. Um, and that makes a lot of sense. That's actually very consistent also with um, learning to tap into your intuition. If you're like, ah, whatever, you know, <laughs> that was a dumb thought or where did that come from? Or if you dismiss it, your mind, you, your, even uh, your subconscious will get in the habit of just dismissing it mm-hmm. and your intuition, it will come, it'll make it that much more difficult to tap into that. But if you embrace it and you get into the habit of it, if you strengthen that particular muscle, um, you'll start to develop confidence in your intuition. And it sounds like the same is true with, with the dreams. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, it's just another tool and it happens to be the one that, um, that I, that I use. And it's funny to me because I remember I've always had a really strong connection with my dreams and I used to, you know, maybe feel spirits and stuff around, but it would freak me out. And I'd be like, just talk to me in my dreams. I can't, <laughs> I can't okay. deal with right. you like standing next to my bed or whatever. And again, like years down the road, like when I started like noticing it, I was like, oh, I did ask them <laughs> to use that way. Hmm. So um, it's been interesting to see how much it, it does talk back and, you know, I also want to you know, stress not to be discouraged because it's not often that people are actually receiving dreams that they remember every single night. So there is another reason that I really like to include dream work. Okay. And so this is, it's related to my program, which is why I also, it's, it's really important to me is, so there are three levels of this energy initiation that I do as well. Uh, it, it's called the Akatawa and it's, uh, innermost light, uttermost revealed, I think is roughly what it translates to. And it's something that I received through my teacher. And basically to describe it, it's uh, 
clearing and aligning your system with uh, your highest expression in this lifetime is a simple way to put it. Okay. And I, I include that with the dream work and the astrology, again, to help that process of integration. And dream work fall, like, moves in with it because <laughs> it's so as you're becoming lucid and, and seeing um, and engaging in this communication with the dreams, you often start to realize that this communication happens outside of the dream. So now when you're seeing signs and synchronicity and, and certain feelings, certain intuition, it's very similar. You know, it's, it's how now that conversation can engage uh, throughout your day, throughout the life. So it's, you know, it's, it's offering a space for the, the subconscious and the conscious mind to actually start talking to each other. And that's that makes one of the reasons of sense. why, yeah, it's really important. And it's similar too when people talk about lucid dreaming. Uh, lucid dreaming is a really powerful tool if you can manage it. I have yet to, <laughs> to manage it more than maybe like twice. So some people are really natural at it and it's delightful and exciting to me when, when that happens because uh, I've read studies on how lucid dreaming can help people work through traumas because it's a safe space to address a literal or a figurative like monster in your, in your psyche, in your, in your emotions. So people who've gone through serious trauma might have nightmares. And if they're in a spot where it's, it's safe for them to do so, people have been able to kind of like, you know, if they're running from a monster, for example, to turn around and face it and, you know, hmm. whether they win or lose there's there's power in their psyche of like having been able to to face it in a safe space and so there is potential for for healing on on dream world too and it's it's like a practice <laughs> a practice round if you will and the different levels of um energy or dimensions if you will like the astral and uh astral etheric and physical so the dream is kind of more like up here where things are more energetic before they kind of manifest down into our like more solid reality. So when, hmm. for example, you could be getting messages of, of imbalances up here or like different things at play, it, it gives you the opportunity to start adjusting your course. Um, period. <laughs> it gives you, it gives right, you right. the opportunity to be, to be in the driver's seat, which is why the lucid dreaming is relevant. You know, you, you you become a lucid dreamer, in the dream time however you know you are also becoming a lucid dreamer here you know like so gotcha. uh if you see it as you're in the driver's seat right now but when you're dreaming now like your subconscious higher self gets to be in the driver's seat so it kind of like they become co-pilots so now you can start co-writing and co-creating um yeah, and I love what you were saying that if you start to trust your your the messages you get in your dream, it can also translate in your daily life. So you'll be able to use that new skill in your everyday life and actually be able to tune into like have more trust in your intuition as well. Yeah. So by trusting your dreams, you can now trust your intuition a little more easily. And and from that, you know, build a a little more solid relationship with your intuition, your subconscious, and it'll make things a little easier for you. Yeah, it's part of what I call a process of uh, cultivating a conversation with with self, like big S self. Love it. You know. Yes. Um, yeah, we've become really disconnected, so it's just been my personal mm -hmm. experience and path of being able to really connect deeply and to listen and the opportunity to, to, to guide other people is, is really a gift, honestly, and to organize them and where they belong. I'm really thankful for, for Patty, you know, who runs Karma Fest that, uh, that she was around. Cause I feel like she was really helpful. Um, just her presence and like having the Karma Fest community in, in, in helping me find my footing again. And uh, bottom line, like just having a community, having people who understand and who are supportive is one of the most valuable things in, in your process. And during mine, I didn't have as much of that as I would wish for somebody else to have. 
So part of me creating this collective to help people <laughs> on their path mm -hmm. is, um, is to do just that, offer them the opportunity, their community Perfect. to, to thrive.